Hey guys, welcome back to the Basement Finishing Man YouTube channel, where today we're going to be talking about egress exits in your basement. I've got a lot of questions from you guys pertaining to these things. Um, there's a lot of controversy about them, when you need them, when you don't need them, do you have to have them at all, do you got to get a permit, how much do these things cost, what are my options? So we're going to talk about all that stuff in the video here today. It's not a real long video. I'm going to try to hit on all the important topics that I'm hoping will answer all your questions regarding these things. So let's jump into a little PowerPoint presentation I have for you here and we'll go over this stuff. Okay, basement egress exit requirements. Do I need an egress exit in my basement? That is the number one question that I've been getting. So let's talk about it. When do I need an egress window? Well, all finished basements must have means of egress, a way to get in and out of the basement, other than using the stairs, the stairs to the first floor of your house. If you have a walkout basement, you will be all set. You don't have to worry about much of this. If you don't have a walkout basement, you'll still be required to put in an egress window if you have a bedroom in your basement. All right, if you're planning on putting a bedroom down there, you have to have an egress window. That's the number one place that the code officers are going to require it. Uh, whether or not they're going to require it in the bedroom and outside of the bedroom in the main living area in the finished basement is really going to depend on where you live and what your code department tells you uh, that they require. Uh, an important note here, and I'm going to stress it one last time, whether or not you have a walkout basement or not, if you're going to put a bedroom in the basement, you have to have an egress window in that room. Separate from any other doors or windows that you have in the rest of the basement that may be egress, you have to have a separate one in the bedroom. All right, it's a state law that all basements with habitable living space must have means of egress. All right, that means whether you have a bedroom or not, if you're finishing the basement, you're gonna need either, or either an egress window or an egress door. A finished basement is considered habitable living space and must meet this code. The window must be large enough for an adult to get in and out and low enough from the ground that you can climb out of that window. Now look, check with your local building department to determine what version of this code is being enforced in your area at this time. I mean, it changes like every three years. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research. Call your township, talk to the code department, and ask some questions. Egress windows or doors are required in every habitable space, especially any room used for sleeping purposes. It will require its own egress window. So if you're a remodeler or a homeowner that's going to remodel, if you have an existing home and you add a sleeping room or a finished separate living space in your basement, the code requires you to install an egress window or door to serve these spaces. Without a means of egress, these rooms can represent a dangerous fire trap if you do not have quick and easy access out of these areas. If you have a basement that has a bedroom, recreation room, den, family room, media room, office, home gym, any other type of living space down there, all these rooms require a means of egress. All right, so what are the basement egress window requirements? All right, so this is, I'm gonna go over this real quick. This is the height and the width and a couple other uh, variables that uh, your code department's gonna be looking at. The egress window must be large enough for you to escape or a fully dressed fireman to come to your aid in case of a fire. All right, you gotta be able to get out, it's gotta be big enough for that. It's also gotta be large enough for a firefighter that's dressed, and when they say dressed, he could have oxygen tanks on his back, he could have, you know, all the safety equipment on. He's gotta be able to get in there and save you, so it has to be big enough. And in order for that to happen, these are the minimum requirements for sizes and other things that they require. All right, an emergency escape rescue opening shall have a minimum net clearance of 5.7 square feet. The minimum height is 24 inches. The minimum width is 20 inches. And the window can be no more than 44 inches from the finished floor. Those are the requirements. A code officer can just stick his tape down there, measure the width, measure the height, measure the bottom of the window off the floor, and he's going to know right away whether the uh, the window is egress code approved. The uh, International Residential Code forbids the use of keys, tools, or special knowledge to open that egress window in question. Okay, if it has any of that stuff, your basement window will not pass egress code. All right, so it can't be anything complicated to get out of there. You can't have a key. The key might not be there or it got lost. Now you can't open the window. 
Uh, you, you don't need any wrenches to turn anything to get out. Anything like that, they're going to flag your window or any special, you know, sliding mechanisms or anything that, you know, for, for burglary or whatnot. You can't have any of that on the window. It's got to be as simple as just unlock the window, lift it up or crank it open or slide it as quick as possible to get out of there in case of an emergency. Okay, so guys, before we go any further, do you like these videos about basement finishing? I mean, it's all the channel's about is finishing basements, you doing your own work, and I'm trying to help you through the project. So if, give me a like or, or subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, every time I put out a video, you'll get a notice saying Eddie's got more basement stuff for us to look at. So I do appreciate you guys doing that. It helps the channel. It helps me keep making these videos for you guys. And, uh, you know, I just really appreciate it. I wanted you to know that. Let's move on. Okay, guys, so examples of code approved window sizes. So what we have here is we got three different types of windows. We got a sliding window right here. We've got a, uh, a double hung window here, which goes up and down. And then we've got a crank out style casement window over here. These are the minimum requirements for what they call clear opening area, net clear opening area. And that doesn't include the frame, doesn't include any trim around the window. It includes just the area in these X's here just the free clear area that you can get in and out of. So for a sliding window, you need 20 inches minimum width, 24 minimum height. If you got a window that just slides up, any type, you know, double hung window, the most common window, you're gonna need 24 inches of clear height and you're gonna need 20 inches of minimum width. And if you have a crank out style window, and this window is probably 30 inches wide by, by 48 inches tall or something like that, um, you notice here the X area is not 30 inches wide. When you crank out a window, casement window like this, you're generally going to end up with about, you know, 20, 24 inches, depending on how big it is. The rest of that space over here, this other 10 inches, is totally unusable to get in and out of. So keep that in mind if you're going to put in a casement window. So that's the skinny on the types of windows and the, and the, uh, the minimum amount of clear space that you need to get in and out of that window for code. So looking at these two windows right here, obviously these are those little hopper windows that most of us do have in our basement, especially if we're completely below grade, the whole basement. Uh, basements that, that don't have a walkout generally have these type of windows. These are not code approved. You see a bedroom right there uh, with a window above the bed. This is not a code approved window. This would fail, all right? So you cannot have something like that. What you need is something like you see in these two pictures right here, 44 inches, you know, maximum from the floor to the bottom of that window. These are probably right at 44 inches. This one might be a little bit lower over here, but both of these windows would pass. Now, most uh, folks that have egress windows already down in your basement, if you live in a newer home, for instance, a lot of builders are putting them in the basements now when they build the houses. So here you can see uh, two of them that were put in before they backfill the dirt around the house. All right, you can see they're wood framed inside. They're all ready to receive the window as they build the house. So you may already have these if you do, and you don't have a bedroom down there, you're already done. You don't have to worry about anything else. But if you don't, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have someone dig it out uh, for the window, then cut it out. You know, normally they're using a wet chainsaw or some other type of masonry saw to cut it out. Then they're going to frame out the opening that they cut out with wood, normally two by six or two by eight, and then they're going to install the window for you. So this is a pretty cumbersome project, you know. Uh, once they're done with that, they're going to have to install some type of code-approved egress window well, and you can see three different styles here. Uh, one of these is going to have to be installed around your window before they backfill. If you're looking at other than a window, let's say you uh, you want a door. There's two different types of um, door scenarios that you can have. One of them is the Bilco door. That's the picture where the guy's coming up out of there. It has the uh, uh, the cover over top of it, and uh, it's got the two metal doors that open up and keep the weather, keep, keep the wet, uh, the elements out of there, keep the snow, keep the rain out of there wherever you're living. Uh, we'll keep the elements out of the stairway going down to the basement. And the one to the right is um, an open concept door where you got to dig down, pour concrete steps and all the other good stuff uh, that goes with that, railings and handrails and everything as well. Um, then we also have a double wide scenario. Now this would probably be the most expensive scenario. Well, it definitely is the most expensive scenario. Uh, you can see how nice that does look. 
Uh, but again, we got uh, one example there with the uh, hardscape steps going down, handrail, and the uh, and the fence on both sides of the retaining wall to keep people from falling down in there. Very involved uh, doors, but they're beautiful. They let a ton of daylight down into the basement. And if you already have a daylight basement, which means the back of your house is fully exposed, you're, you're obviously, or most people are going to already have a door going out to the backyard and some windows possibly as well. If this is your scenario, you don't need egress. You're finished. Unless you have a bedroom down there, in which case this one right here would not suffice. Remember, that's not, an, that's not a code approved window above that uh, bed. This obviously wasn't inspected or it was grandfathered. It was maybe back a few years before they started requiring uh, egress approved windows. All right, you're gonna need a window just like this here uh, or something similar. That's a four by four uh, sliding window that will pass. All right, so if you have a bedroom, you're going to need an egress window inside the bedroom itself. All right, if it's got a door going into that bedroom, it needs its own egress window. Uh, and one outside the bedroom doesn't count. You could have, a, you could have three more of them out there in the, in the main living space. They don't count. If you got a bedroom, they're going to be looking for a code approved window inside the bedroom as well. Big question I get is, this is something I can do myself, Eddie. Um, and guys, I'm telling you right now, as far as a DI friendly project, and now this is just my opinion, I don't think that any homeowner should be attempting this project. There's so much that goes on with these things, guys. You're gonna have to have some equipment to dig that hole. You're not gonna stand out there and dig it with a spade shovel. At least I hope you're not going to. Um, gonna have to dig down so many feet, move so much dirt. And then once you dig the hole, you got to cut through that masonry wall, whether it's masonry block units or solid concrete. You're going to be cutting through 8 to 10 inches of something to break through into the basement. And the tools you're going to have to use, I, I just don't feel a homeowner should be doing this. This is something you should sub out to somebody that do, does it for, for a living. Now, as far as permits go, it's really going to depend on where you live. You're going to need them. I don't know too many areas that let you bust through a low bearing wall and install a unit like this without having some type of permit. They're going to want to come out and inspect the job, make sure you're not doing anything structural that's going to hurt the integrity of the wall that you're cutting into. And, uh, you know, if you're not pulling permits, hey, you know, it's on you whether or not you get caught or not. And you get caught up in that, they might, uh, you know, fine you and make you get a permit anyway, but uh, again, just call your permit department, ask them if you need a permit. It's the simplest way to do it. It's the best way to do it. It's the safest way to do it. All right, so most city code departments are going to re require a building permit to install an egress window or a door. And again, if you're unsure, just pick up the phone and call your code department and just ask them. All right, so let's get into the cost quick here. Cost to install an egress window. That'd be one like those uh, four by four windows that I showed you. The 4x4 window itself, uh, an approved egress well, all labor and material. This is if you're subbing it out, bringing a contractor in here. In my area, it runs about $6,000. All right, and you're going to be getting a window that looks like that right there for that $6,000. That's start to finish, everything included. It might be different in your area, it might be less, might be a, might be a lot more. Uh, this is my area, so you're going to call a couple guys and get a few quotes on that. If you want a bill code door like I showed you with the metal lid that opens and covers the hole with the concrete steps going down and the door at the bottom, you're going to be looking at that door at the bottom that's right inside the basement. Okay, you're going to have that exterior door at the bottom of the steps to keep the elements out. You're also going to have the egress stairwell cover, which is the, the door that opens and closes that you can lock inside there for security purposes. About $9,200 in my area for all labor and material for that. Uh, again, yours could be less, could be more. Call a few contractors and get a few quotes. That's what you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at the metal door on top. You're also going to be looking at the, the well itself with the steps. That's all precast. They set that with a crane. They put the door on top of it uh, that you can lock at the top. You can see it there at the, the double door. And then at the bottom of the stairs, you can see an exterior entrance door that'll keep the elements out because, you know, that, that well is not insulated, it's not heated, it's not cooled. You're going to want to have a, an exterior door between the steps and the finished basement. 
about 9200 bucks in my area. So the cost to install an open concept egress door, that's a door that doesn't have a lid on it. That's a door that is uh, open to the elements. Uh, it's going to generally be a door that has glass in it to let light in it. You're going to need that full light glass door at the bottom of the steps. You're also going to need an approved retaining wall on both sides to hold the earth back. Because remember, this doesn't have a cover on it. You're going to be digging a hole and the dirt's going to fall in. So you're going to have to have a retaining wall on both sides, whether that's poured concrete or it's a hardscaping wall, retaining wall on both sides. It's up to you. And then you're going to need the steps going down, which can either be hardscape again, or they can be concrete poured steps. It's just going to depend what your contractor quotes you. I'm sure he'll give you an option of both. Do you want concrete steps? Do you want concrete walls? Or do you want the whole thing to be hardscaped? Price on that, a whole lot more, because it's very involved. And you're going to need a drainage system at the bottom to keep the water out of there and all kinds of different things. All labor and material in my area, somewhere between $15,000 and $20,000. bucks. There you can see to the left there, you got the $20,000 double wide set of hardscape steps going down, $20,000 bucks for something like that. And the smaller one over here with the, uh, with the single door, with the poured concrete steps and walls, uh, and, and the fencing on top to keep people from falling in, and the handrail going down. And, and both pictures have that. Fencing on top, that, that railing on top of the retaining walls is code, and then you'll also need a continuous handrail going down from the top step to the bottom, all to be code approved. You've got about 15 grand for the one on the right, the single door, and about 20 grand plus on the left. So, I mean, you've got to really have a purpose for this type of door here. I mean, you might have a pool out back and you'll be entertaining up to the pool area and back down into the basement. And you just want to have that, you know, light coming down and have a more traditional entrance into the basement. Well, that's what you're going to be spending right there. Um, actually, my favorite entrance, but not that many people go for that option because obviously the price is, is the issue there. All right, so let's recap on this one more time here, Guy. It is the law, all right? So it is the law to have an egress entrance into the basement, whether it's a window or a door, the International Residential Code, the IRS, and this is from 2021. It changes about every three years. You're going to want to check with your, your township, but that code pertains to all single and two family homes. That's going to be you guys probably. So check with your local building code department to see what version of the code is being enforced at the time that you're getting ready to pull your permit uh, to do the project and see what they tell you. Remember, egress windows or doors are required in every habitable space, according to the IRC code, especially in any room used for sleeping purposes, a bedroom. It will require its own egress window. So guys, that's it. I hope I answered all of your egress questions about uh, your basement project. If you have a basement right now uh, that's not finished and all you have is hopper windows down there, you know now you're going to have to get some type of egress exit out of there, whether you got a bedroom or not. And if you're planning a bedroom or more than one bedroom, you're going to need an individual egress exit, whether it's a window or a door, in each individual bedroom. And remember, the ones that you install or may already have outside that bedroom, whether it's a you know exposed basement, you got a full exposed rear sun daylight basement. Uh, you could have a sliding glass door down there and big full windows down there. They don't count for the bedroom. The bedroom has to have its own. So if you're planning putting a bedroom down there and it's not attached, the bedroom's not attached to one of those windows or doors down there, it's not in the bedroom, you're going to have to have one installed if you want to call it a bedroom and uh, you know have it put on the permit. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I answered all of your questions about egress in a basement. Uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up on this video, give me a like. That definitely helps out the YouTube algorithms, helps out the channel, and then YouTube ends up showing my video to more people like yourself that are looking for basement finishing information. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you do, hit that notification bell. That way, every time I put out a new video, you'll get a notification saying I've got new content ready to go. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.